so that it keeps your body safe so you can continue to function. So now if you're taking a medicine, is medicine organic or chemical? Chemical. Chemical. So if you're taking that aspirin to, to help your headache, your body goes, ah, there's poison. Fight the poison instead of fixing the headache. So when you take the poison or you take the aspirin, it's going to cover up the symptom, right? Because it goes in and it covers it up so that you don't feel that your bone is protruding out of your neck. You don't feel that anymore. Should you just continue to go about life, woo, protruding bone, woo-hoo, take some aspirin. <laughs> don't feel it anymore. That's a blind way to go about life. I ask why a lot. I want to know why do I have this headache. Why? So if our patients are out there, they don't have the information that you have right now. They don't have it yet, but they will soon because you guys are going to be able to explain this to them. Um, this picture of the sperm and the egg, I just find it so fascinating. I mean, these are cells. These are cells. How do they know what to do? They just know. It's innate intelligence. And then over here, we have some nerve cells, which are so cool. Um, it's the information superhighway. We have electricity flowing through us. These, these impulses, thoughts, how many heart, heartbeats do I need right now? Wait, I'm starting to run. I need more heartbeats, more lung capacity. These signals are being fired from the master computer, which is the brain. The brain controls and coordinates everything. It uses the information superhighway, which is the spinal cord and the nervous system. And here we go. Here is the spinal nerve distribution. The nervous system controls and coordinates all body functions. Every signal that we get is controlled and coordinated by the nervous system. We have so many nerves. We have such a network of nerves that if you were to peel everything off and just left the nerves, you, would, you could tell that you were a human being because there's so many nerves just would, would be left. You could tell. Everything that you feel, if, if you have a nerve sensation, if you're feeling something right now, you have impulses firing, impulses going. You're blinking your eyes, impulses are firing. All these many, many impulses. I think there's 50,000 functions going on in the body at one time. 50,000, that's crazy. All right, so if you have a nerve, I'm sorry, if you have a bone, that is rotated out of alignment in this section, where does that nerve go? All the way down. So it's not just affecting this area, it's affecting every organ that this nerve goes to, every muscle, every connecting tissue, every fiber is being affected. The brain is unable to get the signal down because the bone is stepping on the nerve. Now, literally, the bone doesn't step on a nerve. I'm just using that as an example. It doesn't literally crunch on a nerve. But it does put pressure in the general direction of the information. And they say that a brain's impulse can be stopped up to 60% by the weight of one silver quarter sitting on the nerve. And if you just take a hair, I'm not going to ask you to pull out your hair, but if you took out a hair and you laid it on your hand, that's about how fine the nerves are, you lay it on your hand and you stick a quarter on it and you try to think, 60% of your impulse will be stopped. Now how much pressure, that's the weight of a silver quarter, how much pressure is put on your nerve in a car accident? A slip and fall. A bike accident. There's a lot. Okay. So, what is the first organ in the body after the sperm meets the egg? What is the first organ in the body that is created? Spine. Spine. Somebody said that's a bone. Spinal column. Spinal cord. It's the brain. It's the brain. It's the master computer. So it's really kind of cute because it looks like a little stick with a blob like a Q-tip at first. And it's this brain, and then the brain shoots down, it's a glob of, glob of uh, tissue, shoots down a little uh, cord. 
And then that cord goes all the way down and it branches out. As it's growing, it branches out. And then it develops the other organs. And then what happens is that we are so masterfully made. I mean, designed perfectly, our bodies are. Take a look at it. All of our really, really important organs are surrounded in solid bone. Solid bone. What's the most important? <laughs> solid bone. I can't touch my brain. Yay. Right? Okay. It's protected. Thank goodness. What's next? The spine is all the way protected, surrounded by bone. Surrounded by bone. It's protected by the bone. And then we need some shock absorbers because if it was just bone on bone, it'd be, we'd be walking like this. We couldn't walk. So we have shock absorbers, like in a car. It's the disc. So it allows us to bend and flex and move and turn and twist. And it's perfect design while still protecting the spinal cord. So it's amazing. If you look at this, you can see um, we have three sets of vertebrae. We have cervical, which is the neck, cervical vertebrae. We have the thoracic, which goes down the middle of the back. And then we have our lumbar, which is our lower back and our coccyx and our sacrum. Now, in looking at this from the side, you'll see posterior is behind us, anterior is in front of us. These are some words that you may hear. Posterior, anterior. I just think posterior, posterior, behind me. <laughs> anterior, antlers, forward. Um, and you're looking now at this, I would like you to look at this part of the spine. This is looking down on it. So these little bony processes right here, that's what we feel when you, when you go like this and you feel down your spine. That's what you're feeling is this bone right here. And if you take a look at this, we have organs. We have really important vital organs, right? So we can't have this pointy side on the inside. So we have smooth right here, smooth on the inside. That's beautiful design. And then right down through the middle of it is a large opening. It's the hole that the spinal cord actually goes down through. And then popping out the side, so this is this part right here, popping out the side is where the nerve bundles branch out. And there's holes here as well, so that there's no interference. And planted on top of that are muscles, ligaments, and tendons. And then woven throughout, we have our nerves. Here's a good picture of it. These are the discs. These are the discs. These are, I call them jelly donuts. <laughs> Because they're, they're fluid-filled sacs. They're actually very um, thick materials, very, very thick material. But there is uh, it's juicy stuff inside. <laughs> and it's a spring. It acts like a spring. And it keeps, it maintains the space from the bones so that the nerves can come through without being pinched. So now if you were to rack this area and say this nerve was branching out to your heart, could you have problems in your heart? Maybe. Yeah. See, what happens when we have cells, they die and they reproduce. Do you know that? Every, every seven years, you have a brand new body. Every seven years, from head to toe, it's brand new. There's tissues that heal faster than others. The eye tissue heals the fastest. Um, we need our eyes, right? It's really important. So we have, if you get a cut on your eye, it'll be healed by tomorrow, more than likely. Completely. Our eye tissue regenerates the fastest. Very interesting. What is it that heals the slowest? Is it the lungs? I'm not sure. I, I think, I'm, well, I think it's the lungs that heal, take the longest. So that's why when smokers um, quit smoking, it takes them years before they have their lungs back. So uh, you really want to be cautious about that. Um, so anyway, wherever that nerve is going is, um, the, is going to be affected. And so if we're constantly regenerating, regenerating new cells, then what is going to create a healthy cell? If you imagine a cell like a plant, what does the plant need to grow? Nutrients, soil, water, Sun. oxygen. 
Okay, so our cells need all of that. Each and every one of our three trillion cells needs all of that to grow and to produce and to reproduce. And then the, the life of a cell is short, it, it will die off, but it's replaced by healthy cells. If we're getting the signal, what controls and coordinates all the nutrients? What controls the I mean, nutrients? What tells what nutrients to go where in the body? Innate intelligence. The nervous system. Hmm. The nervous system tells, you drink a glass of water. The nervous system goes to work and says, all right, this is what you're gonna do. And then the water gets dispersed throughout the body where it needs to go, and it's just beautiful, it's amazing. It, it happens like that. So now if your nervous system isn't controlling and coordinating things like it should, you could drink the best water, the most expensive water, the highest you know, filtration level water. It's not really gonna do you any good because your body's not getting the signal to process that. What about organic food, which I'm a big fan of? But if your nervous system isn't controlling and coordinating how that food is digested and how the nutrients are dispersed, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. All right, so, so that is the importance of the nervous system. And then here's a little chart. I love this chart because it, it really graphically shows what organs are affected in what area of the spine. All of these materials, you guys, I want you to study them. Study them like your life depends on it because it may someday. I'm living proof of that. It was because of my education about the body and how the body works that I was bold enough to smuggle in my chiropractor and fight off Nurse Ratched. <laughs> it was because of my understanding and my boldness of the knowledge that I was able to stand up against the medical doctors and get done what needed to be done for my son, and it saved his life. So I really want you guys to focus on this information, even after we're done here today. I want you to take your books home and study, study, study. All right, so here's that important area of the spine right here. This is the thoracic. Go straight to the heart, the lungs. And incidentally, these charts, we know about all of this uh, really important medical information because all the studies and, and the autopsies and things that have been done, it's not just chiropractic that, that knows about this. The American Medical Association knows how the body works too, and they also put out charts just like this. But this is um, a chiropractic chart, which I just love it. Do we have any questions? so far about the body and how it works. What about heartburn? Does anybody suffer from heartburn? Okay, I want you to <laughs> That's right, if you're the type of know there is no heartburn. Okay, um, has anyone suffered from a childhood illness? Raise your hand. Okay, Shannon, if you wouldn't mind, would you share with us? Um, I Asthma. That's very common. We hear we hear that a lot. Asthma. Um, so, what part of the body? Then, looking on your charts, uh, what what bone would, if it was out of alignment, affect your asthma? Uh, first through third thoracic. First through third thoracic. Right. Now, you've been under chiropractic care. Uh, yes. For about yes. A year. For about a year. What have you noticed about your asthma? Um. Well. And she's been under chiropractic care because she's been having those bones adjusted and your tissue is able to repair. So that's amazing. That's Thank you for sharing that with us. Those are the kind of things that we see. Yes, ma'am. Well, I have a question. I'm something that's kind of been weighing on my mind lately mm -hmm. is we have a patient at work who's been under chiropractic care for at least 20 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, for just a long time. She's just, her family's under chiropractic care. And she recently had back surgery, and I asked her what happened, and she said that she had, I don't remember if she said a herniated disc or um, a bulging disc. Mm -hmm. But my question is, I mean, she's faithful once a week for her adjustments. How does that happen? How does the bulging disc happen? Or how, I mean, I just don't get it. I mean, I, I'm just shocked. Like, why would, you, why would you have surgery if you're under chiropractic care? Doesn't chiropractic care prevent? Degeneration of the disc, I mean, that's what we're taught, right? Right. Well, in some 
some cases, what happens is that there's an injury, like for example, my neck. Um, I still have a slightly herniated disc in my neck. Sometimes you're just too far gone. But what would her life be like without chiropractic care? See, chiropractic care gets your body to, to function at its highest level. At its highest level. My body function is gonna be different than Dr. Justin's body function. Our levels are gonna be different depending on what I'm eating, how I'm sleeping, how much chiropractic care I'm having, you know, how my nervous system is functioning. And also, people are born with disabilities every day. So they start off, you know, kind of behind. So chiropractic care gets your body to the best it can be. Now, was surgery required? Possibly. If, and I'll go back to this one. If this disc, the do jelly donut I was telling you about, if you squeeze on one side of a jelly donut, what happens to the stuff in the middle? All the good stuff goes out. All the good stuff goes out, right? And if the good stuff goes out onto this nerve, it can really do a lot of damage. Um, we've seen people lose control of their bladder. We've seen people's legs go numb. You know, we've seen a lot of horrible things that happen. Now, chiropractic care, what, what that does is it takes the pressure, uh, it puts the bone back into alignment, it takes the pressure off of this disc. Many times what happens is the body can absorb, I've seen some crazy MRIs, where the body can absorb that tissue and rebuild and regenerate. Because remember, we, we are regenerating constantly. So as that, that starts to heal, oftentimes the symptoms will go away. However, if you know, there's just so much damage in this area that that pressure is landing on the nerve, some people do require surgery. And I hate to even say that because think about surgery. What, what, what's the first thing that happens in surgery? What was that? What'd you say? They cut you open the valve. Right. Well, first of all, they give you drugs to knock you out. So you already have an invader in your body. Woo hoo! The body's going crazy. Now they're going to come and slice into you. And that's horrible because have you guys been scarred before? Okay, I, I was cut open. I hit um, glass leaded on my knee, and um, they were trying to get the glass out, and they actually pushed it up under my kneecap and sewed me up with it in it. And two years later, I'm on the ground picking up staples for my teacher, and the glass had resurfaced, and they came down on it again. It was bad. And my dad's like, suck it up. We had not met. <laughs> there was nothing to cry about. I'm like, yeah. So finally, they believed me, they took me in, and they saw that there was a big hunk of glass that needed to come out. But anyway, when it heals, have you cut through a juicy steak before and you got to some gristle? You know that gristle? That's scar tissue. That's like scar tissue. So, and it never goes away, right? If you have a scar, it stays the same scar forever. On well, my knee, I have those. I have two scars. One when they, it happened, and one when they came to take it out. So, that will never go away. So if you're cutting through all of the tissue and the nerves, incidentally, what am I looking for? Well, this one is good. See the guy in the middle? See all that muscle? All this muscle. You have to slice through all of that to get to the bones and the spine. Now, what happens when that knits back together in scar tissue? Is it going to be flexible anymore? No. no. Is that patient ever going to be as flexible as he once was? No. Never again. And then what happens if they put metal rods in the back? No. Have you seen that? Have you seen? Oh. There's some gruesome photos out there. I saved you guys for this class, but we may go into it next time. <laughs> but there's these metal rods that, that they insert into the spine to keep it locked. Now, one thing that you need to know about the spine, the really important thing that you need to know about the disc as well, is that this disc is, is keeping the cushion so that the nerve can function. If something were to happen to this disc, um, it would just it would really be bone on nerve at that point. So we, we really want to maintain this. Um, when they cut through all of the muscles to get here and they have scar tissue, it restricts mobility. There is very little space in between. In fact, it's sandwiched. It's bone sandwiched on top of, of the disc. Now, the only thing that will feed this disc its nutrients, its 
everything that it needs to grow and regenerate is motion, friction. If it's moving, it's regenerating. So if you go in and you put metal rods here and on the other side over here, how is this going to get fed? What's going to happen to this disc? It's going to degenerate. It's going to, it's going to collapse. It's going to fold in on itself. And now you've got a really big mess. Really big mess. Spinal surgery is pretty gruesome. But in some cases, if you're getting ready to lose all of the, the, the spinal process or the um, nerve impulses from the brain up to the body where there's vital organs, would you rather be paralyzed or, you know, alive? So in extreme cases, and it's up to the doctor's discretion. All right. Dr. Justin, yes. what is the vagus nerve for? Everything. It helps to innervate the uh, heart. OK, so we have a very important nerve right along our neck. The vagus nerve helps to regulate the heart. Digestion. That is kind of vital, right? And it's in our neck. You would think it's kind of close back here. Well, it's in our neck. Um, I put this picture in here because I wanted you guys to see how everything connects. Do you see how the little tissues on the side here? Th this, is the, this is the bone. This is the spinal process here. These are the connecting tissues. See how everything is connected? That's why you wouldn't just want to check one bone, right? You wouldn't want to get your whole spine checked because it's all connected. If this one's out, this one has an opportunity to be out as well, putting pressure. And these nerves controlling and coordinating everything from the brain down through the body, then we have these muscles. We have muscles all over the whole thing, giving us uh, the ability to move <laughs> and to stay connected to all of it. It's just so intricate. The way that we were made is so amazing. It blows my mind. People are afraid of the popping sound in the neck. Do you ever get that? That's <laughs> like the number one answer that we get. Um, and I believe two things about that. Number one is that every Claude Van Damme movie I've ever seen, <laughs> somebody sneaks up behind and goes, Wah! pop, 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 <laughs> instant death on the floor. <laughs> instant death. That's scary. And there's a lot of those movies out there. It happens all the time. It's really hard to break a person's neck. It takes a lot of force in just the right place. You have to be specially trained. We have, we have a system that is so perfect. Atlas is way up here. This is the axis. They're so special of bones that they gave them their own names. Atlas axis. Atlas, the guy that holds the world, right? The atlas is holding our head. It's the world to us. And underneath it is the axis. It helps us to, to um, turn and, and move. But inside of this top bone, I'm sorry, in the bottom bone here, there's a little notch. It's called a dense process. And it goes up inside of the atlas. And it's basically a stopper, so we can't spin our head around like the exorcist. <laughs> so it's important to get x-rays. I don't know if you guys use x-rays or not, but my aunt was born without a dense process. So she shouldn't have her neck adjusted roughly. And that's important to know, right? Before you get in there, if you don't have a dense process, that's important to know. So that's why x-rays are important to me. I believe that people need x-rays. Um, but also the atlas axis. Right down through this, oh, there's a better, I know I've got a better photo so you guys can see it. Oh. turned out to be true, that he came back to life once 
somebody stop stepping on the nerve. So the brain funnels down all of the impulses down through the top of the neck. Who here wants to get adjusted right now? <laughs> or get checked, right? I mean, <laughs> how often do you want to make sure that this is functioning? All the time. All the time, right? Okay. Okay, now if we don't get adjusted and have our power turned on, this is the opposite side of the coin. This is kind of crazy stuff I'm getting ready to show you here. My grandfather died from Alzheimer's. And it was the saddest thing I think I have ever witnessed. My grandfather was such an amazing man. He was spiritual, he was a lover. All, all of his neighbors knew who he and my gran grandmother were because they were so generous. If it, somebody was sick, they would go and give them food. You know, I never heard the man cuss, not once. I never saw him take a drink of alcohol, not once. He was um, an electrician and he grew up uh, back in the old days on a farm, and he was really truly the salt of the earth. And he could quote Bible scripture like nobody's business. I mean, Grandpa, I'm having this problem. But oh, <laughs> go check out the scripture. It was amazing. And um, anyway, he lived a wonderful life. And then my grandmother died, which they were married for close to 60 years. And almost immediately, he started to deteriorate. And then we got a call from the sheriff that he had taken his car somewhere crazy and they wanted us to come and get him. And so they came in and my aunt and uncle brought him to live with them. And we watched this amazing man, spiritual, just phenomenal human being, just go downhill. And it was so fast. And what happens is that our body is shooting impulses. We're electric, shooting impulses. It's captured <coughs> by these healthy cells. This is the, how the neurons travel, how our nerve impulses travel. They jump from branch to branch. It fires and it jumps, it fires and it jumps. Now what happens when it's unhealthy, how is it gonna jump from here? Can't it jump. can't. It just gets stuck, or it doesn't fire at all. And eventually, you have no memories left. You have no body function left. Your body can't even fire for the heart to beat anymore, and you just die. And I saw my grandfather go from vital, amazing, to a violent, babbling mush, ball of mush. He always remembered my name, which was really interesting to me. That pathway stayed connected. But he forgot my dad and my uncle's names. And um, in the end, he, he got violent and he actually pushed a nurse. And he was seeing weird things. He says, get out of my wagon. And we're like, Grandpa, there's no wagon. And he's like, get out of my wagon. And he pushes this nurse and she falls over a table and she breaks her arm. Wow. So when our cells aren't functioning, there's devastation in our lives. It's not just physical devastation. There's a ripple effect. And his illness affected all of us the whole time it was going on. Have you guys ever been through a, a long-term illness with a family member? Raise your hand. It's devastating. It's devastating for everybody. So we really want to focus on the healthy cells. Okay, this is cool. I saw these and I was blown away. Look at the healthy dividing cells. They look like little bursts of sunshine, don't they? They're dividing and they're happy and they're vibrating and they're shooting out their energy. Look at the cancer cell. It's being eaten. The body is, is being, I heard something really interesting um, when I was doing the research on this. Our cells have a lifespan. Every cell has a different lifespan. They, they live, they do their job, and then they die. And then they're replaced. They live, they do the job, and then they die. Cancer cells live forever. Did you know that? Cancer cells never die, they only multiply. 
unless they're radiated and wiped out. Or the body has a nervous system that is so uber on fire, it just eats it up. Like down here on this corner, down here, these are healthy cells attacking a cancer cell. But look at how big this cancer cell has gotten. It's just multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. And these, these guys are like, uh-oh, let's go in there and try to attack this. But look what happened to this guy. He came in and he was attacked by the cancer cell. It's a predator. It's a body predator. And the only way to fight it, the best way to fight it, I should say, is by prevention. That's the best way to fight cancers by prevention is to strengthen these cells so much that when it sees a little tiny cancer cell, this is breast cancer, look how wicked that is. That's wicked. We want these to be uber, shiny, powerful cells so that when we do have an invader that comes in, it's no problem. It's no problem. The other interesting thing that I heard about cancer cells, when they look deep into the cancer cell, they're finding a lot of chemicals. They're finding a lot of household chemicals, pesticides, fabric softener, just crazy chemicals. Um, after I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna take a look at all the chemicals that I have in my house and I'm gonna start transferring over to natural substances because if this, if, 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 well, it makes sense, doesn't it? If our body is organic and we're, we're coming across poison, toxins, remember like the medicine, our body is going to try to defend itself as, as best it can, but sometimes it, the chemicals can cause it. So we, we just have to be careful. I just want you guys to know that on a personal level. Uh, watch out for those chemicals. All right, are there any questions about this so far? Yes, ma'am. You know, that's a great question. Um, I do not know, but I can find out for you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just curious. I know, it's so neat, isn't it? Okay, so we now know what healthy looks like. This is what subluxation looks like. Look at how disgusting that is. Do you want this to deliver your heartbeat signal? It's like a cavity. It's going to constantly degenerate and deteriorate and splinter and fracture. And uh, look, at, look at the disc. Compare it to the healthy disc. Remember the healthy disc was really fat and happy, <laughs> like a jelly donut? This is withering away. It's almost gone. So this, this is subluxation. This is what happens when you, say, have a car accident. There's a minor car accident. And a bone was rotated out of alignment. And you took painkillers instead of replacing the bone. You took the painkiller so that you wouldn't feel this happening. How blind is that? How blind is that? <clears throat> Ask why. Why am I feeling this way? Well, let's get to the bottom of it. Let's get to the bottom of it. That's a subluxation. You. How many people have patients in their practices right now with major subluxations, do you think? <laughs> Major subluxations. Okay. I got a girl yesterday. Yeah? She's just a kid, 24 years old. Doc marks the x-rays, severe accident. She goes, never had an injury. I go, really? Never? She goes, well, I had a car accident. I had a concussion for three months. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and she's in really bad shape. But she goes, but I went to the doctor. They took x-rays. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, that's, that brings up a good point. Okay, doctors and x-rays. <laughs> All right. So chiropractors go to school just as long as medical doctors do. But where medical doctors branch off in drugs and surgery, chiropractors branch off the other way into nervous system, spinal function, natural medicine, how the body works, and x-rays. What, you guys have, what, 209 hours in x-rays or something? Too much to count. Yeah. Too much to count. Mm -hmm. Compared to doctors who have like 80 hours in x-rays. Who do you want to look at your x-rays? And what are they looking at? All 
medical doctors do is they're looking for cracks. <clears throat> they're looking for breaks in the bone. They are not looking at the way that the bones line up. They're not looking at biomechanics. They're looking for gross breaks. That's it. And if you don't fit, your pro fit the protocol like I didn't because I was pregnant, you're going to get glossed over altogether. You don't even get x-rays. So you definitely want a chiropractor to, to be looking at your x-rays. So then the good news is that chiropractic adjustments remove nerve interference and they increase normal body function. Right? We're, we just went all through that. Why is it important to get adjusted? How many people get adjusted on a daily basis right now? Daily. Okay. How about a weekly, weekly basis? Getting better? When I was in CA, I wasn't allowed to start a shift. My doctor wouldn't let me start a shift until I got checked. And I, would ha I had things to do. I got to get to this. I got to do this. I got to get this. Kimberly on the table. Dr. Justin said it makes me no, do it now. Good job, Dr. Justin. Gold star for you. Because really, if, if we are subluxated, how good of a job can we do? Do you want a subluxated man flying an airplane that you're going to go in? It's motor function. <laughs> I want him free and clear of all subluxations before he starts driving my plane. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Well, the same thing for you guys. You're taking care of other people. You're on the front lines. How clear do you want to be? Ask your doctors to get checked. And that doesn't mean that you're going to be adjusted every day. It just means that you're checking to see if you have any interference or not. And given what we just saw with those cancer cells, I want my nervous system 100%, all times. So please uh, write down on this, on this page, get checked before your shift. <laughs> and if your doctors have a problem with that, tell them to call me. Can we have your number? <laughs> eight five eight <laughs> two four three two two six five. It's on the back. Yes, you can have my number. Okay. So right, knowing what you know now, how old should you be for your first chiropractic checkup? Zero. Zero. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> right. So we said before birth. Yes. So then the next question is this. Who in your family is under chiropractic care right now? Somebody say everyone. Raise your hands if all of your family are getting checked on a regular basis. Okay. My son is hilarious. He is going to be a chiropractor someday. Whoa. Loves it. I take him to Life West. He hangs out and plays ping pong. <laughs> he loves that campus. Um, he was in the school nurse's office. And I get a call. Uh, Mrs. Gorham, your son is in the nurse's office, and he's asking to go and see the doctor. And I'm like, that's weird. Doctor. And I hear Jacob in the background say, chiropractor. <laughs> get it right, lady. <laughs> he's asking to see the chiropractor. He felt a fever coming on. Oh, I gotta tell you about fevers. Um, oh, before I do that, I want to talk to you really quick. Finish up with the family because this is really important. If you're subluxated, what kind of parent can you be? Not a hundred percent. What kind of lover can you be? What kind of wife can you be? What kind of friend can you be? You are not functioning at a hundred percent if you're subluxated. So. If your family, if you want your family to be functioning and getting the benefits that you're getting, bring your family into the chiropractor on a weekly basis. Your chiropractor wants your family to be checked. So then the question is, what if there was no adjustment? What's the other side of the coin? My son wouldn't have made it. I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, he wouldn't make it. Oh, it gets me. It's been so long, and it's me every time because I love him so much and he is such an amazing child and he's going to do such good in the world that um, I can't even imagine my life without him. But there's other mothers right now going through it. 
<laughs> I couldn't believe these pictures when I saw them. I'm like, I gotta put this in. <laughs> Baby sandwich. Mm. <laughs> so kids go through all kinds of trauma, right? Mostly from our parents. <laughs> a child. That's a boy. Oh yeah, he's holding onto his arm and his pants. Oh my god. Yeah. So does that little yeah. guy have a subluxation, you think? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> How about the sandwich baby? <laughs> I don't know. He's crying pretty hard. Uh, which leads me to, um, to this next thing. There are three ways that we can get subluxated. I'm gonna, I want you guys to write these down. Three ways to get subluxated. Physical. Chemical and emotional. Physical, chemical, and emotional. And it makes sense if you think about it. Bear with me. I want to get, bring this one back up. Physical, chemical, emotional. If we ingest poison, it comes in through our mouth, goes down the tube, into our stomach, and it, it gets processed. People are, are people. I keep calling myself people. <laughs> they're not important to me. Cells are going to come in. They're going to do their job. Now, it, it sends a signal. Once it gets down, it sends a signal back up to the brain. Problems, problems, problems. When you put your hand in the fire by accident, say you're on the stove, the first initial contact is over here. It's not here yet. It's here. You put your hand on the stove. What do you do initially? Move it. Ouch. Think about that. It goes all the way up and all the way back down really fast in a split, split second. You're getting impulses traveling up, traveling back down. That's a physical subluxation. That's a physical subluxation. It could be um, a bike accident, a car accident. It's something that's physical. That, that impacts your body and makes a change. Chemical would be the poison. You go out drinking one night. <laughs> too much. You go out drinking too much one night. You are having a chemical subluxation because you've tox your, yeah, your body's toxic from the alcohol. So in all of these things, going up and down this pathway, up and down, things are getting moved out of alignment. Because it's a two-way street. The, the nervous system is a two-way street. So the chemical subluxation, it, it could be drinking, it could be medication, it could be whatever. And then you have your emotional subluxation. What, what could cause an emotional subluxation? Grief. Your spouse. Grief. Your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> your Vietnam vet father <laughs> who hates chiropractic care. <gasps> Right? And that, incidentally, that can also cause a chemical subluxation because now I'm stressing out so often mm -hmm. that I'm getting ulcers. Mm -hmm. So if you don't realize that emotions can cause sickness and disease, disease, just think about when you're stressing out and you get an ulcer. Absolutely, your emotions mm -hmm. control and coordinate things for the good or for the bad. So those are the three types of subluxation. So when somebody says, no, nah, I've never had an accident, Really? Okay. <laughs> How stressed are you? Are you a heavy drinker? No, you wouldn't want to say that. <laughs> there are many ways to get subluxated is what I would say. Okay, so we have the baby, and he's raised by this man at the carnival. <laughs> Never seen a chiropractor. Wow. Without chiropractic, what kind of a man will he be? And remember we talked about the ripple effect? I'm going to be using that throughout the day. What kind of father will he be? What we do is so important, not just for the individual, but it is important for the entire family. Now, what if this guy was a truck driver, and he drives a big, heavy, big rig? And he is subluxated. He has grown up subluxated <clears throat> excuse me, his whole life. 
and he's barreling down the road, subluxated as all can be. Do you want to be driving next to him? No? And he's subluxated, and he's distracted because he's yelling at his kid on the phone, and he plows into another family in a minivan and kills them all. That's a horrible thought. If he was unsubluxated, would that have happened? Less of a chance of it. 